So let's talk to Mark and Kat then. How have things been in the dental surgery Good. over the past busy. couple of weeks? Busy. Busy. Seem really busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, hectic couple of weeks, but um, yeah. There's a new addition we noticed, Mark, to the uh, to the practice on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't come off. Well, it will do in a in a couple of weeks. Yeah. This um, this month um, uh, is uh, November, and uh, it's uh, Movember is uh, done for. Uh, men's health so it's prostate and testicular cancer so that's just promoting that um so every year i just grow a tash and uh, just to sort of promote that and it's more of a talking point with patients coming in and asking but they've um they've coincided this month is also uh mouth cancer awareness month um so that's that's another thing that it's probably easier for me to talk about mouth cancer than it is to talk about testicular cancer but um yeah both important things and the good talking points so people will say to me why are you growing a mustache mark and I said, well, this is for November, and then you can lead it into that one. So are you raising money for the courses as well? Um, no, I, 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 I don't sort of... Uh, uh, I'm not rattle. tin rattle is what I, the way yeah. I say it. So I, it's, there's, there's so many things we have. A, there's a smile train, there's mouth cancer awareness. Uh, so there's so many things that we could. I think if patients were coming in, there'd constantly be a tin stuck in front of them. So what I always say to people is, look, we're just promoting uh, oral health, dental health, uh, mouth cancer... Uh, men's health and if people want to donate then I always just say just go online or just donate to your local charity or to whatever's you know closest to your heart or if they want to sort of look at you know uh, mouth cancer or testicular prostate cancer then do it that way but mm -hmm. I don't I don't sort of sponsor myself if you like um, we have touched on mouth cancer before because we <coughs> talked about the fact that when you go for a general checkup yep. you're looking at much more than just the health of teeth there has been a massive increase in um, the incidence of mouth cancer over the past 20 years or so is there any indications to why that is some of its detection um, it's drummed into us at dental school now you know look look everywhere you can do a, a quick look in 15 seconds maybe yeah, I can just have a look so. if there's anything that looks a little bit suspicious we'll usually flag it up if it looks really suspicious we'll send them straight up to nobles yeah. um, most uh, strange things in your mouth will be gone within about a month about a month isn't it and if they're not gone within a month then you know they're probably worth just getting them checked most things 99.9% .9 of things are just benign there's nothing sinister about them but it's always catching things early awareness is always you know a really good thing um I, and i would hope that we should see a reduction in things because people are stopping smoking um, there's obviously a link between smoking and heavy alcohol uh, consumption um i don't think there's any um studies coming through whether um e-cigarettes and vaping would have any effect um the we don't tend to see uh, on the island, we don't tend to see people who sort of chew tobacco. Uh, there's a, a kind of um, a product called Pan or Supari that they kind of chew or they shove down the side of their cheek, and that's really carcinogenic. That's really nasty. Um, but again, I think that's a sort of cultural thing. So you get certain areas in Manchester and Liverpool and probably London where you'll see that. We don't sort of, or I don't see that. No, I haven't um, seen it. Well, Mark and Kat are with us throughout the programme, so if you've got any uh, tooth-related questions, one double six, one double seven, or you can email studio at manxradio.com. Um, but you have brought a little model in with you, Mark, um, which we had to wrestle off Nicola in the green room. Um, <laughs> she, she took it apart and put it all back together again, yeah. What is it? So this is just a little model uh, of three teeth. I'll try and describe it as best as I possibly can. Um, if you lift it a little while you're talking, it might go on the video. It might go on the video, right. It, so yeah. I'll lift it up a little bit more. So what, what you've got is you have three teeth and it's supposed to show you one missing tooth. So if I turn it around that way, you can imagine you've got a tooth there and you've got a tooth. So you've got a tooth either side and a gap. So the gap in the middle, what you're trying to do is how do we fill the gap in the middle? So you can either leave the gap, you can put a little denture in there, uh, you can put a bridge or you can put an implant. So it just shows you that if you have a bridge, what you've got to do is you've got to drill the two teeth either side and then you've got effectively... Um, a bridge unit like that and uh, people say to me well what's a bridge so if you think of it in engineering terms and if I look out the window I can see the bridge with a bridge you've got a support on either end and then a sort of um, bridge going across a bridge going across <laughs> a pontic that you go across so the army terms is abutments and pontics and a pontic uh, in dental terms is the false tooth so your bridge that you drive across that's suspended you know either end that's the pontic part of the bridge and the supports are the abutments at either end so this just shows you, to put a bridge on someone's tooth, you've got to effectively drill or damage Perfectly two teeth. Perfectly good teeth. 
Yeah. Mm. Uh, whereas if you put an implant in, what we do there is we drill an implant into the bone, we put a little post onto that. There we go, screw that on a bit. You can and tell you've done this before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Not the wrong way around, there we are. And, uh, <laughs> that would look embarrassing, wouldn't there it? There we are. And that, that just screws into there, and then we put a tooth on top. So that then the idea is that we don't have to drill or crown the two teeth either side. So you're only touching one area, not sort of three. That sounds much more preferable. In terms of pain and, and things like that, having an implant? Shouldn't be painful when you're having it done because the idea is we get you really know. numb, you, um, you know, nice and comfortable that way, so you shouldn't feel anything. There's usually a little bit of pushing um, and you'll, you'll feel this kind of pushing about there, but it's just the same as if you're having a fill-in. Um, you feel pressure, not pain. Yeah, that's it. And so then afterwards you can be a little bit, sometimes you can bruise, uh, sometimes it can feel a little bit achy. Um, because you've you've had a space there that you've suddenly you've put um, a metal rod if you like or it's a screw but you put a titanium screw inside and so you can actually sort of expand the bone and so you feel a little bit of pressure there but most patients that we do it to don't complain yeah. if you know they're in and agony or anything. how long will that last right um, implants we talk between sort of 10 and 20 years okay so we're aiming for 20 years that's what we want um, they still talk about 10 year so sort of survival rates or, or is it still there in 10 years with anything with dentistry the the more it's looked after the cleaner the patients can keep it the better it is and certainly with implants um it's clean 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 that's it you, you want them spotless people think well if i don't look after my teeth i think it's a false tooth they yeah. think, oh, i don't have to worry about that no it's the same amount of effort you'd put in with your natural teeth as you would do with an implant if not more yeah, because so. what you don't want, if you look at that, you've got, it's it's kind of under the gum, but around there, you've got an interface uh, between your mouth and then the gum and then the metal. And what you don't want is you don't want bacteria and plaque growing and, and moving down because they will damage that metal root just the same way they will damage a natural mm. root. Um, I always so. have the overwhelming urge to brush my teeth throughout these interviews, yes. <laughs> <laughs> which is good, and hopefully everyone else will as well. I'm intrigued to know, while Mark's doing this sort of surgery side of things, then yeah. tell us a little bit about what you're doing around and about that while it's happening. Doing is making sure the patient's okay, and obviously that, that's our primary, that they're, they're not feeling anything, that they're comfortable, obviously conscious, that helps. Um, making sure Mark's got everything that he needs. The whole surgical side is set up for the nurse. So if Mark comes over, he's there um, gloved up. We gown him up and everything beforehand. We um, Then we pass instruments and things that he needs to him. He will then do the implant. It's very much Mark does a lot of the work. We're just there she's, aspirating in, she's, making sure the patient doesn't She's watching the patient. Choke. Yeah, <laughs> she's watching the patient. She's also, she's watching me because to some extent, the danger for me is that I focus just down on that tiny area of your mouth. I so need to see everything else. She's mm. watching to make sure that you're all right. But she's also watching me to see if there's something I've missed. Um, and she'll she'll nudge me. There was a, I was I was doing some work today, and the patient's sort of left hand was was moving a bit. And we always have the left hand as like the stop signal. If your hand goes up, we stop. Now I can be if I'm looking through a microscope, I'm just focused down through sort of two eyepieces in one small area. So I, I'm not aware of what's going on around me. I'm just focused on that one thing. So Kat today, just just sort of, she'll just nudge me or she'll sort of, she'll brush my leg uh, or she'll catch my elbow or something. So she's not knocking me, but she's just letting me know. So I, I can say, stop. Mark. So, well, yeah, or she'll shout. So. <laughs> and it is okay, isn't it? Because I know I've been told before, you know, if you, you want to stop for any reason, you know, raise your hand or whatever. Yeah. But mm, that yeah. is okay to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'd much rather... Uh, even if you think oh, I just want to sit up and, and swallow for a bit, or I just want to just want to sit up and just have a breath, yeah, that's fine. Just just put your hand up. I mean, it, what we were joking before. I was saying that we rest on the patient when when we work, and what what we actually do is you'll find that most dentists, when when they're sort of operating or if they're working on you, they'll maybe put their little finger um, somewhere on your cheek, so you hardly notice we're doing it. But the reason for that is if you suddenly sat up, the I'm holding away a drill, from you. and the instrument goes with you. So it's not suddenly dropping down the back of your throat or cutting through your cheek or anything like that. So if you move suddenly, unexpectedly, you'll you'll probably surprise us, but we're not going to cause an injury, you know. So that's why we'll just kind of we'll have a reference or or somewhere where we're just we're not leaning on you, but we're just kind of okay. I know where you are now, so that way we can go together. 
Yeah. And we've talked a little bit before about people who have fear of going to the dentist. Mm -hmm. And that element of still having some control, I guess, is quite important in alleviating okay. that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we're quite, I mean, we'll quite happily stop, um, take a breath. Some patients... Some patients are literally set up every sort of 20 seconds because they, they feel like they're choking. And you, we're there with the aspirator. We're doing our very best to ensure that that doesn't happen. But... It's just a fear. I've got to sit up. So you just go with them. It's fine. You might know you need to sort of, you know, I might be able to do a fill-in in half an hour, but for that patient it might take me 40 minutes. Yeah. So you know you've got to book them in for a little bit more time um, or you get them in at the end of the day so that way if you're running late it's not affecting the other people afterwards. Yeah. yeah. And Kat, I'm guessing as well from the point of view of your role, do you, do you have quite a lot of interaction with children that come in? To sort of, yeah. 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 <laughs> <That's> <laughs> loads, because I watch loads of cartoons with my ones. So I'm in the know, shall we say, with old Cartoon Network and Boomerang, and uh, you hit a rapport with them. We blow up balloons for the like gloves, we use them, and that'll keep them entertained. Mark's really good with kids as well. So between the pair of us, if one of them comes in that's a bit like sort of anxious and what have you, we find a common ground, and that's it. They're our best mate. Give them loads of stickers, and they're fine. 